Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to take the global stories that made it to our national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Dr. Martin Morgan. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's a great pleasure. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, so we'll be starting with the punch this morning, and the punch leads with landowners sue federal government over 15 trillion naira Lagos Calabar Highway. The riders here says Humahi vows to continue project, insists government paying compensation. Another says federal government rules out new roads in 2025, plans to complete existing projects. So we're seeing a lot of landowners um, suing the federal government now. This is a 700 kilometer highway from Lagos to Calabar that is to cost about 15 trillion naira. Um, about 750 houses or homes and businesses were marked on that highway that they want to build. Um, however, these people are saying that they've not really received adequate compensation one person was saying he got about 1.3 million naira compensation and he was saying he could make that in just one week so his business has been crumbled and now all you're paying is 1.3 million naira which is not adequate in fact is nothing at all what do you think about this with the federal government creating this highway taking this this um these businesses out of their own business, something that's supposed to put food on their table and table for even the people that are their workers. And now what they are being paid or given as compensation is nothing compared to what can act what they can actually bring in a week. I'd like to get your take on that, please. Well, yeah, my, my take on it is uh, a very unfortunate situation whereby uh, they will see that people have now suffering from some of these policies that were not uh, really uh, meant adequately for them. Which, for me, this project of this uh, uh, highway is not be a priority. But at the same time, we need to look at what are the books, what have been the master plan of uh, the of, of of Lagos State within that area to, to the coastal line. These are some of these issues that we have to understand. Then the compensation plan. The reality of the thing uh, or the matter here is that the reality of the materials you use last year and this year, there's a lot of discrepancy in the sense that you cannot even afford to buy them again to say fine if you want to go and get yourself reset to somewhere. So I think for me the compensations are not being very very adequate. And a lot of people have lost their businesses. And I don't know what is being uh, the objective of the road at this moment in time. Do we really need that? That is a very big question we need to understand. But now I can see a lot of people have lost their livelihood within that area. Then at the same time, when they were acquiring some of this land, or, or, I'm talking about other people, when are they acquiring this land? When they able to do a thorough search to see that in the future, there wouldn't have been this type of situation they are now facing themselves. Uh, they are facing yeah. these are some of these questions we need to understand about the land developers and we have to understand about the government too hmm. but um I, I i understand what you just said when acquiring a land you should be sure but i'm sure most of these people um they knew that it was the land was okay to acquire at that point because the only reason why the government would be paying compensation is because they know that they're taking it away from you um however you said something that is this really what we want at this time or what we need at this time um what other things do you think we would need i know some people have been saying a railway should have been better if we have like a rail network but what other projects do you think that the federal ministry of works should be doing right now instead of the coastal highway from lagos to calabar well, honestly i enjoy like what you said if you were really being a very uh, uh, definitive and thinking and um, uh, 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 policy officers like the railway you talk about like uh, the ministry of transportation like what we did in nigeria to maradi in niger that would have been something that would have been translated from here the coastal area from the east to the west and that would have even be more appropriate in the sense that there are some rails up to Aba. then from Aba, getting to the other area wouldn't have been so difficult compared to what we are experiencing today for me, I think uh, we are paying compensation. Comp compensation. How do you define compensation? Compensation at this point in time is to the to 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 the uh, to the benefit or just say uh, to the decision of those who are in charge. They are the government. Then you don't have a say at this moment. Are you not telling me because they want to invoke the land act you that they say all oh, 
all, all land belongs to government. And that is why they can take it away from you. So yeah. some of this technicality we need to understand. But for me, the Federal Road uh, Ministry of uh, Housing at this moment, that road, what is the intent of the road? What do we intend to achieve? That shouldn't have been. We need a lot of housing estates. We need a lot of uh, park recreational. Mm -hmm. We need to resettle. There's even this type of environmental uh, the uh, global war warming, which is telling that the, body, the coastal areas are not safe. What have been the embankments are we going to do to save that the coastal area against flooding? How am I sure that that road will not be uh, abandoned? Mm -hmm. Have we been able to do that impact assessment? So I think it's a misplaced priority for me just to get in some money to the pocket of some boys and some people. I think that's just the way to the detriment of the citizen. This is what I, I am mean, I mean, Do we want us to now start having maybe like a, a beach road? Fine, good initiative. But then at the same time, is it a priority for us now? The railway, like you mentioned, will have been a very apt situation and start having a lot of housing estate whereby people can now say, fine, move into this area at affordable price, yeah. not some of the ministry officials have uh, when you have to go to some of these estates they own more than five or three houses and they keep on renting it subletting it to, to other people to make money so these are some of the issues we need to really streamline and uh, we don't need that type of uh, highway at this moment it's desirable but it's not needed at this moment mm -mm. well so you you said something that how are we sure that it's not even going to be abandoned well even as of right now the minister is saying that Okay, we know the this project was supposed to take about eight years, but he's saying that there might just be a delay. And I hope that this is not just a ploy to, you know, move it out of the way. And before you know it, it will just be abandoned. Already, you also know that the initial plan that led to the bulldozing of this road and destroying some of these economics, uh, livelihood of people, has been shifted. Hmm. Now, we have to narrow it as against the original plan. So that tells you, those are the indicators, strictly my views, those are the indicators telling you that there's a likelihood that in between the race, we will think there are other priorities we, not, we want to cut up. So you may end up somewhere, and you may not be able to achieve. If it was really an internet, why didn't they start from Calabar, from Cross River, coming toward this side? Mm. And these other people walking, then those people said, oh, walking in, uh, from the middle, but let's say from Benin Delta area, and understand that. Have we been able to now secure that the, the, the track of that route from here to that uh, Calabar, we secure that corridor in terms of banditry, in terms of kidnapping, in terms of other security as related. Have we been able to be sure that, yes, nothing will be hampered, that equipment and material will not be stolen, and the people will not be kidnapped to pay ransom? These are some of these issues we need to really put into perspective. For now, the people are very hungry. This is not going to be a priority for us. I don't think, for me, it's a very big priority. It's desirable, but it's not needed now. Mm. All right, let's move over to another story <laughs> now. Um, another one says, NNPC director's expenses jump by 214%, and that's the report. So uh, we do not have a lot of money. We're taking in loans. Um, uh, the government is not really cutting the cost of governance at this point because we're seeing that NMPC's directors, their expenses have jumped by 214%. And they're also part of the government. These are the people that tell us to be patient. But we're seeing that they're spending and splurging so much. I want to get your take on this. The fact that they tell us to tighten our belts, they tell us to be patient that things will get better, even though we're not really seeing that at the moment. Instead, it is handouts and palliatives here and there. But then their expenses are jumping by a whopping at 214%. Your comments, please. It's just, it just like saying that, uh, like, just like the, uh, some of the, uh, the this uh, 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 as for reason, that the preacher will tell you, do what I say, but don't do what I do. We are having that type of disconnected uh, relationships and communication. These people call NNPC and co. They are, the, they are one of the problems we have in this country, the oil group of people, because the cartel in that area is stronger. So look at those their expenses. They are looking... I don't see the difference between NNPC and put them in the same basket. We are not telling people we should be 
camp. But your expenses are, are bolting up to that point. So what is the cost of governance? And you still go back to the issue of governance we are talking. Up to this moment, we are expecting that by now the NNPC should have been streamlined. We are expecting that by now there should have been a reorganization in the NNPC and CL. Whether CL or whatever, NNPC is still NNPC. Still the same other government expenses. The cartel and those other people who are even talking, they are causing malaise about fuel shortage. Look at the accused. The kids are all over the places, and the refineries are now been working for the past years. They have been there. What are they been doing? And they are still collecting the extra coal and keep on traveling. So, so for me, we have not been able to do. If you have a, a government that have yeah, decisive on what they preach, by now we should have been on board with NMPC by now and know what is happening inside because. They are one of the major problems that are making this country to be so difficult to manage. And that is why it's also affecting us in terms of our foreign exchange and the rest. Because nothing is working. Look at our internal crisis and inflation. Our life here is dependent on PMS. A lot of things are PMS. And anything that affects the PMS, and who are those people behind the PMS? It's the NMPC. So it affects every, every level at the supply chain level. Look at the food stock that is coming. Every person says expensive. Yes. Because before you move from point A to B to go and carry your food stuff on the farm, which we have inspiring half few farmers, it's hard to do it before. You have to transport it. The logistic angle of it is affecting. Then these people are still living like demigods. And this is what is affecting us. And by now, if I have a way, or if the government have a way, we should onboard do NMPC. There should be a house committee to review who, are, who is who in NMPC to understand what are they really doing. What are they NMPC in us? Because you know, there are a total group of people giving us a lot of nightmare. We have to change that name to Nigerian Nightmare Corporation. If this is how it is, because it's not been able to help us. We should onboard them. The government is too expensive. the cost of governance and i think that's that's important because yes. that's where we start from that is uh, that is you showing us that yes you you hear us loud and clear i mean the president has said of her, i hear you loud and clear but how else can we know that you hear us loud and clear if you're not doing certain things or taking certain measures to ensure that we're cutting the cost of governance, we're managing the resources that we have. We're crying out that we don't have money, we're taking so many loans, but then cost of governance is at an all-time high, and we're seeing NMPC yeah. get yeah. over 214 uh, percent All right, let's talk about... Yes, it's very, very yeah, let's talk about um, Nasu Sanu, so the educational system. Here it says, Minister Rights Finance Ministry over Sanu Nasu withheld salaries. Now, um, on, the, on the business NG, it also says ASU issues 21-day strike over unfulfilled promises. So, of course, uh, we're talking about cost of governance. They're spending so much, but then they're withholding people's salary. And the salary of our educators, the people who are supposed to educate our kids, and if we're saying we want a better Nigeria and we want quality citizens, how else do we get that if we're not really putting money into education. So we're seeing, um, you know, these people, their salaries are being held. And right now, they're going on a 21-day strike because they've already issued a warning. The Minister of Finance, Tanko Sununu, has also had to write, um, the Minister of Education, rather, Tanko Sununu, has also had to write to the Minister of Finance, Wale Edun, regarding this. Why do you think that the government isn't taking this as a priority right now? It's still the same question we keep on asking. Why do we allow it to always snowball to that level of crisis? Mm. That is the question. If we have an, it's an agreement with you and they call up their strike, why can't why 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 are we not fulfilling them? Some of these breaches is what is also affecting us even in our external uh, relationship with other countries. So this is what is happening. It's so unfortunate that our people from the educational circle are always going you know, that pains other pains that their salary are not being paid and at the same time at the other flip side for me my view here is also the fact that i i i tend i don't want to say i'm insulated with by on the plight of a uh, 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 asu because most of the returning officers during our own elections in this country are members of the citadel uh, community which are the, the lecturers and the universities and they gave us what we are receiving and that is the policy that is nice affecting them they are also suffering from that part but we have not been able to look at who are those suffering from it the children and our kids that we want to say we are, we are leaving the country for them for a, a future generation 
But they are not having any teachers. That is why most of them, you see that their children are not in this school. Watch out the newspapers or the social media. You see any graduation. Have you seen any of them having graduation or their kids in any of the Nigerian universities? No. Mm -hmm. The answer is no. no. So they are so much insulated to the parents of some of these guys, these lecturers who are trying to move on. If you go to some of the universities, you see a lecturer, you will not even like to be a lecturer. Because you start feeling the pains. Mm -hmm. You see how shabby they are looking like. You see how how they are no 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 improvement no facilities no equipment to teach the children on the modern technology the prompt engineering processes that is going all over the world we don't have it in our educational system hmm. why are we not having it and the people are not going on the reformation the what we call cycling reformation in terms of their uh, uh, department to know that yes to be in tandem with what is obtainable outside no grant research fund not there Nothing is there. So you see now, we don't have that priority. Our, our educational our educational sector has not taken any center stage. And that is why we keep on having strike strike. A four-year course, we end up doing eight years, seven years, yeah. which is not supposed to be. And people are happy, but their children are not in these schools. Their children are all outside the country schooling. Right. And because they have access to that, then what happened to the taxpayer money? So that is why they are so much insulated. If there's a policy that no government official should send the ease of our world outside to school, then I think they will be able to look at the, uh, at the, at the plant of the educational system we have in this country. These teachers, I, 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 I feel for them. When I lecture, I call them teacher. I feel for them. That is why they can always use them. Because when they, what they have succeeded in doing, they have succeeded in climbing them and give them a lot of hunger. That is why they can be able to manipulate any other electoral system for them and say, that, fine, this is... Is. And when they get there, they don't remember them. It's so unfortunate that we find ourselves in this situation. Every day, one crisis or the other. The lecturers, I, I feel for them. They have the right to agitate. But at the end of the day, the strike will not even yield anything positive. They will just use the carrot and tell them, okay, fine, we are signed, we will go. Then they come back again, they go again. So this is a cyclical thing that is not helping us. It's so sad. It's so sad. Uh, I don't think now, Nasu. Asu, non academic staff union and the academic staff union. Invariably, if they go down, you should just close down the schools. There's no point again. Then your children will, your child or your wife will remain in the house. Final year student, what do you do to them? What are you going to do to them? What are you going to tell them? They have to have extra years, extra semester, and it's not helping. And there's no money anywhere. The parents are all struggling. There's no middle class in Nigeria. It is either you are up, you are down, or you are down. This is when we are finding our situation. Uh, uh, it's very sad. Mm -hmm. Dilapidated buildings and structure, nothing. Go to the student hostel. You go to their hostels, you feel even those people in prisons are even living better than some of the hostels you see mm -hmm. that students are living. And that's when there's a high level of courtism and crisis. It's so sad. The government has to really retain and reject and let us also get them involved. And at the same time, we need to also look at some of these schools. Do we really need some of these number of schools we have, universities we have? We need to merge them based on professional uh, uh, vocation and whatever we want to do. This is another thing we should be able to do to reduce so that we reduce the malaise of these guys who are suffering in the institutions. Mm. All right. Um, the business angel leads with Naira struggles um, to continue. Naira struggle continues as dollar shows strength. Um, I don't even think we'll let's talk much about this because this has been for a while. So we keep seeing um, the Naira go down. Now, I think it's about 1,600 naira to the dollar, which is quite yeah. unfortunate. And I don't know the magic that they did where it went to about 1,100, and they said it was going to be less than 1,000 naira, but we're still seeing this. So do you have any comments on this quickly? Yes, I have a comment because, you see, when countries depend only on one source of uh, income, like Nigeria, we depend on the food oil. But tomorrow they will tell you that some people are stealing the crude oil. We don't know who are those <laughs> oil theft uh, protagonists. Now we you see that it depends on that. It comes to that situation where our Naira in the visa Naira has now been noted to be one of the weakest currency in 2024 all over the world. Even Bloomberg projection have shown that. IMF projection have shown that. IMF have even projected that our Naira will end up falling by two up to 2,000 uh, 2, Naira per dollar. Mm. That's what IMF is doing. The economy intelligence units think they are only having a 2,000 Naira per dollar. Normally, it's not supposed to be that. Be that. They will refuse to understand that the budget we are operating, we are pegging a dollar at 800 Naira per, 
uh, eight hundred naira per dollar. But now, if you are getting that projection to two thousand to two thousand five hundred now, what do you do about the differentials? Hmm. That means we need to keep on borrowing, and that is why when country attacks so much, I am not an advocate of these brand school institutions. These brand school institutions are not able to help Africa. They are not here to help Africa. IMF, World Bank, they will ask you to devalue, depreciate your currency. They are not helping Africa. So it is high time if you have other sources to give for your, uh, your growth domestic uh, product, your GDP and other services. You should be able to define that this is how it is. And the only way we can do that is agriculture. And agriculture now, we are uh, not having that type of uh, uh, mechanized level of agriculture to a point whereby you can see that whether it things will come or export, we can export and get money to beef our currency. That is why the volatility of your currency still remains the way it is. Because we have still, we have a, a steep depletion of our external reserve, and it has affected the, the foreign exchange in Nigeria, which is all due. So insufficient dollar liquidity. Our liquidity of dollar is not sufficient because most of this money is being mopped up by the politicians. And the same NPC guys you are talking about, most of those are government institutions. So it's affecting us because they are mopping it and they are preparing it because it's easier for them to carry. So the devaluation of our, our naira is no longer on the function of the market forces. Rather, it's been a definition of some group. Despite the reforms we are doing, it's not helping us. The market volatility is so high to a point that the naira is no longer. Imagine it's safer here, when the Republic safer or Cameroon yeah. safer. It's even 50%, 40% higher than the naira. I remember very well when I was in those countries. They, when you give them 1,000 naira, you have enough currency. But now right. you, can't, you can't have it. Mm. You don't have it. So it's so sad. It's quite it's unfortunate. unfortunate. You are saving that type of situation. It's quite unfortunate. I hope that um, whatever they're doing, they're trying as much as possible to ensure that um, our currency gains strength. It would be nice to have a naira one naira two dollar so. i know it's wishful thinking but at least let's let's still get somewhere even if we have 400 or 500 i'm I not hope. sure people will complain as much because even businesses the cost of doing business right now is quite high because of this same exchange rate so i hope that they're they're thinking about something and not allowing all of our investors to leave because obviously you're seeing our manufacturing industry dilapidate at the moment okay let's take this final one from the guardian so the Guardian leads with this. It says insurgency in the northeast, thousands in dire straits as supports dry up in border towns. So this is talking about the insurgency in the north. So we're looking at states like um, Adamawa, Bernu, and Yobe, and we've seen how Boko Haram has taken over those states. Now, a lot of people are on the borders. There's been a lot of humanitarian um, funding. But as of right now, it's even drying up. So what, why is the government not looking at this? Why is the government not tackling this insurgency? Why are they not tackling insecurity the way they should be? What can they do if you were to advise them? What can they do better to ensure that people are safe and they can go back to their homes? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Hello, sir. All right. I think we just lost um, Dr. Martin's audio. But I was trying to ask a question, which is what Guardian leads with. It says, thousands in dire straits as supports dry up in border towns. So we're seeing these towns just being uh, ravaged by Boko Haram, by insurgency, by terrorists. And we hope that the government is trying their best to ensure that we feel safe in Nigeria. These are people that where they call where they called home is no longer home to them. Um, I'm sure if some of them were doing business, maybe having farmlands or something. They cannot even afford to do that. They're just having to be in certain camps, which is quite unfortunate because everybody should feel safe in their own country. And we hope that the government is trying to tackle insecurity as fast as they can as swiftly as possible and in a sustainable way to ensure that this doesn't happen again.